do, have flyers about all those ideas on our table. And then one day we're out there, and uh, it turned out we had just connected with this uh, tofu manufacturer in western Massachusetts. And it turned out they, had, they were making t tofu, and it had to be in a little square like this so it fit in their little plastic boxes, right? <laughs> But unfortunately, it didn't always work out that way. So they had all these little chunks, and they didn't know what to do with them, so they threw them in a white bucket full of uh, cold water, and we made arrangements to have them just bring it into Bread Circus every week, and we'd pick it up in the back. So we got all these boxes, all these uh, five-gallon uh, um, plastic buckets full of tofu. So we came up with this idea called Tofu Spread. So we just, uh, which starts out with tofu. And uh, so, then, at the same time, a dentist come by, comes by, and he happens to say, oh, I'm retiring. Would these little tiny cups be of any help to you? We go, well, we'll find some reason to use your cups. And sure enough, right after that, um, we got a job moving the New England Free Press. And uh, they have all this, uh, printed all these flyers. And one of the brochures that they had huge stacks of was about how Coca-Cola was hiring death squads to kill labor organizers in Guatemala. And so one day, not long after we get these donations, a guy said, a group of college students come by, and they set up a pop-up tent next to us. And on the pop-up tent, it said, take the Pepsi challenge. And so it turns out that uh, what they were doing was they were being hired to undo the uh, lids on all the bottles of Coke the night before, and then you come out. And because you've seen this on TV and read about it in the paper and everything, you would know you could get in line and put a blindfold on, and then you could uh, take a t taste test and see which was Coke and which was Pepsi. Not hard to predict. And uh, so we thought, wow, this is a great idea. We have all this fruit. We just got this new tofu donation. So why don't we uh, do uh, our um, challenge, and we'll call it the Tofu Smoothie Challenge. And so people would come past us to do the Pepsi Challenge, and we'd say, hey, take the Tofu Smoothie Challenge. There's more nutrition in this one cup of Tofu Smoothie than in all the Pepsi products on Earth. And here's a brochure about how Coke is killing uh, labor organizers in Guatemala. And they're like, whoa, that wasn't on the TV. What's up with that? And so uh, this thing would go on every day. It was like a ton of fun. And then uh, at, one, at one point, they called the police on us. The police come down, and they're like, I don't know what you think we're going to do about it. These guys are friends of City Hall. They've got a, they have a refrigerator in City Hall. The mayor even like uh, makes announcements about how no one need go hungry in, in, uh, in Cambridge because we have food on bombs. And we'd already organized three uh, protests with uh, Cambridge City Hall. It was food on bombs, Cambridge uh, City Council for nuclear disarmament. And we would march from City Hall to Draper Lab on uh, August uh, 6th on Hiroshima Day, things like that. So we were like really tight <coughs> with the local government. So eventually uh, the uh, Pepsi Challenge people uh, packed up their stuff and gave us the middle finger and stamped it <laughs> off to another uh, <laughs> corner somewhere. And so that was that. So um, that's the kind of thing we did. We also did huge protests. We took food to protest down in uh, um, Washington, D.C. We did the June 12, 1982 uh, second special session on nuclear disarmament where a million people came to the Great Meadow and Central Park in, in uh, New York City. And we had that kind of, uh, you know, things that we were just doing all out of our little collective house in, in now in Alston. And um, so then I moved, in 1988, I moved to San Francisco, which is the most liberal city in America. Apparently. And so... Um, Camp pulling over on people in Santa Cruz. And so, um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, get, I get a grant from American Peace Test, and we're going to uh, take food out to Nevada test site, because Bill Clinton has got this great idea of doing a bunch of underground nuclear tests. And so we're going to try to stop it. And American Peace Test has given us money to bring up by tables, and we knew about this uh, miso, um, which we read in the book of miso, would be good to eat if... Uh, if um, there, you're around nuclear radiation, and where is there more nuclear radiation possibly than anywhere than Yucca Flats in Nevada? <laughs> so we brought tubs and tubs of, nuclear, of uh, miso, which is the next thing you put in your tofu spread, and um, and so we're out there, you know, at the at the test site, and these women come by and they're going, oh my God, that's so amazing! You're you, what? Are, why do you have a banner saying food not bombs? And they said, well, that's what we're called. And like, that's really really cool because we just went out to ground zero, and we uh, took a huge banner that said food not bombs, and we laid rocks on it so that it wouldn't blow away, so that when the uh, 
military flew by in their helicopters and stuff, they would see the words, food, not bombs. So we're like, that is really cool. And then another group of people came by, and they say, oh my goodness, we're like, uh, we heard of food, not bombs, but uh, we had no idea how to get a hold of you, and we're collecting food and giving it out in Long Beach, California. But, uh, so we were calling ourselves bread not bombs because we didn't want to get sued by whoever was called food not bombs. <laughs> and they're like, no way would we sue you. You should take our flyers, call yourself food not bombs, and there'll be three groups, one in San Francisco, one in Boston, and one in Long Beach. So they take the flyers and make, make a banner themselves down there. So now we've got three food not bombs. Right. So I go back go with my friends to San Francisco, and we find out that the Haight-Ashbury Soup Kitchen serves Tuesday through Friday, and there's two churches on Saturday and Sunday that do food in the Haight-Ashbury, but no food on Monday. Yet now there's hundreds of people living in Golden Gate Park. And so we decide what we would um, do Mondays from noon to two uh, at the entrance of the park, because we knew all these tourists would come by there every day. There would be all the workers coming from uh, the Haight Street and all the people coming out of the parks. And, of course, you get the bonus of the deadhead when they're in town. So, uh, so, so all these deadheads would be there. That would triple or quadruple your numbers. And, and uh, so we are doing that. And sure enough, um, uh, this nice hippie comes by one day and he goes, hey, you can get a permit for this. And he just write a letter to Mary Burns at the Parks Department. She'd be happy to get you a permit. And we go, oh, that's so nice. So we write a nice little letter. We make some letterhead, write a letter, send it over to Mary Burns. And then we don't hear anything. So we go by her office every once in a while. And they don't know what I'm talking about, a permit for food and street theater. They're like, I don't know. I have any idea what this guy's about. But here, you know, we'll call you if something happens. And so, um, so anyway, uh, one day we go down. It's August 15th, 1988. It's uh, a little foggier than uh, it had been. And sure enough, about 45 riot police emerged from Golden Gate wow. Park and arrest nine of us for serving food without a permit. <laughs> and uh, the police were clever. They told the San Francisco Chronicle to bring a photographer and a reporter, and they did. And so now they've got the next day on Tuesday the 16th, this big photo of riot police guarding the food from, from the hungry and a headline saying uh, nine volunteers arrested feeding homeless at Golden Gate Park. So people start to call us up going, man, how can we get arrested with you guys? This sounds <laughs> So we um, have a meeting and we say, okay, why don't we invite everybody to meet us at one end of Hate Street. We'll march down the end. People can bring uh, pots and spoons as instruments. So about 150 people will meet us. And uh, at 11 o'clock on the next Monday, uh, we start. Mar we have a few speeches. Uh, uh, Max Ventura plays the Digger song. Um, then we start marching down the street. And one of the guys has this nice painting he did of Spot from Star Trek. And he leads us down the street, and we get to the end, and we set up. <laughs> this time, the police arrest 27 of us. And there's a, a new TV company called Cable Network News. And they get video of this, and it goes worldwide. And so now, uh, Mayor Aliotto, the former mayor of San Francisco, is on vacation in Italy, and he's like, hey, hey, uh, Joe, look at this. There's people getting arrested, feeding hungry in Golden Gate Park. He's like, oh my goodness, that's crazy. And uh, so now, People are, uh, we were in the London Times, the New York Times, the Times of India, CBS, all this stuff. So now people are writing us letters like crazy from all over the world and calling us saying, hey, we want to get arrested in our town, how do we do it? <laughs> well, it turned out we had made notes about how to start a Food Not Bombs, and so we decided to make a flyer called Seven Steps to Starting the Food Not Bombs and send it to all these people so they get arrested. And um, so then uh, the next week, we have about 500 people meet at Hayden uh, Central. We march down the street, we get to the end, and the police go, we don't mind that you're feeding the homeless. It's that you're making a political statement, and that's not allowed. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so they said, what we'll do is we'll give you some city buses, some uni buses, we'll come by Monday morning, pick up all the homeless people, and take everybody out to the ocean, to the armory, at Ocean Beach, you can feed everybody in there, but you can't be out on the streets with literature and banners and stuff like that. And so then the media comes and say, what do you think about that? That makes sense, doesn't it? And we're going, well, actually not. We're uh, really not a charity. You know, when we started, there were almost no homeless people in America. And uh, since that time, there's now 50 cents of every tax dollar is going to the military. There's certainly enough money for everybody to uh, not have to live in the streets or eat at soup kitchens yep. if we just weren't buying MX missiles and Star Wars and stuff like that. And so um, 
you know, so and then we also said, you know, there's this other thing called the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, right to free speech, and if having flyers... Oh, who's even read that? ...public isn't 